looking at myself as I would see myself in the future. Looking up at my father, looking at his face and seeing my face. People are so inclined to believe that black men are deadbeat fathers. The f*** else you need? I'm the black boogeyman villain that just came on. Something going wrong, I'm the one you put the blame on. Community is f***ed up, shame on me. Deadbeat daddy put the blame on me. Black men actually enable the very thing that they hate. Woo! Okay, so by now, everybody has heard about the CDC uh, research uh, that was done that black men are going around using that as their safe word to prove to everybody that they are excellent fathers and they are the most involved fathers of any other demographic. Shut your d ass up. Shut your d ass up. You put the game on me when I'm the best father. All the pain I see telling me to try harder. Broke in them dusty, no deodorant, I'm musty. I'm the ball guy for the race when you getting busted. Stand up and be a man when your women want the role, want the leadership, the money, run the f Household, be as naked as a child, and I supposed to smile. You the reason why the neighborhood kids running wild. Karma comes around, baby, keep your cookie. Matter of fact, I'm on a flight. You can pass that shit to Pookie. Chicago back to Houston, New York, we deem this useless. Baby, I'm in DR, and mommy serve me juices. Every movie needs a bad guy, why not be the black guy? Shit, you can hang out on me. Scapegoat, point us out and take no shit. You know they gonna bring it on me. When you need a reason and the ladies commit treason, all you gotta do is bring it on me. Your daddies and your uncles and your nephews, that's the most that's watch the whole world. Bring it on me. You to blame for this crisis, you to blame for this ISIS yeah. Paper saver got created as favorite, who you think gon' die for being righteous? Woo. Who gon' vote for their oppressor? Me. Who pay most and get the lesser? Uh. You handing out all of the treasures, the immigrants getting the blessings Who you think rapping is real? Yeah. What my opinion about this kill? Uh. I'm not Arab, homie, how did this feel? Yeah. Cause I'm not living off in this real nah. My opinion no matter, we get a deal No reparation, just a meal I'm only speaking about what we feel Keep talking the talk, I need a refill Every movie needs a bad guy, why not be the black guy? Shit. Don't you care, man, you know me. Me. When you need no shit, you know they gonna it on me. When you need a reason and you ladies commit treason, all you gotta do is it on me. Your daddies and your uncles and your nephews, that's a monster watch the whole world. Blame it on me. Every movie needs a bad guy. Why not be the black guy? You can it on me. When you need a scapegoat, point aside and take no s***, no they gonna Blame it on me Fathers are underappreciated Those of you guys who don't know, my name is Dennis Sperlin uh, Also known as Uncle D, affectionately by the young fellas out there And of course, the Blizzard King <laughs> Nevertheless, um, or should I say, um I'm an attorney, I'm a podcaster, and I'm also, my favorite title is that of father. Um, but I'm going to take the opportunity today to really talk to you guys about fatherhood. Black man hit me up being like, yo, I can't wait to be a dad, I can't wait to be a father. And I feel like I owe those young men to tell them, like, bro, this is hard. Because it exposes things about you that you don't know about yourself. It exposes all of your insecurities. Man, it's a huge emotional undertaking. Right, when you see this and me playing with my baby and it looks really cool and you want to have those moments, just know that that's the upside. It comes with a downside and it can be incredibly painful. So before you take on a family, bro, go see somebody about your past and go see somebody about the trauma that you've endured throughout the course of your life and start healing. Because if you don't heal from that, you have all this and you'll never be happy. Especially anybody who thinks that you can just pour water over a lady and a baby and have a happy family overnight. This ain't no meal, man. I mean, yeah. Welcome back. 
like the seats of an 86 Delta 88 coupe on D's and bones, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> Going live in a minute, Blizzard King. This is winter, Dennis Sperling podcast. You are rocking with the realest black men represented. Ain't no lies, cause we winning. Catching flies, ain't no feelings. Uncle D, we the villain, baby. We just left the village, baby. Now we in them villas, baby. Dennis Sperling podcast. Tuning in, we get it, baby. You can hate the player, hate the game. We love all you haters. Hate watch, hate watch. Calling lovely ladies, hands on your knees. Bitch, bitch. You can thank us later. We snatching the crowns off of queens. We obliterate them. Hella truth, chain the devil. They trying to eliminate us. You begging the sipping haters. Peeling layers off of haters. Whoa. Southern Cadillac music like outcasts. Ain't jumping without bass. Dennis Burden podcast. Whoa. Southern Cadillac music like outcasts. Ain't jumping without bass. Dennis Burden podcast. Whoa. We have to clean up what's going on in our house before we do anything else. Shout out to everybody in the chat room, man. Y'all hit the number one button. Let me know you're in here like swimwear. Uh, my name is Dennis Sperling, also known as Uncle D, the Blizzard King. And I would just want to give a big shout out to everybody in the chat room. I want to thank everybody for coming in and hanging out with me tonight. Hit the number one button. Make sure you check in. Let me know <clears throat> where you're checking in from. The super chat is open. The cash app is open. If uh I say something that inspires you. If I say something that um, teaches you something, if I make you a cause for you to think down, uh, think about something that you hadn't uh, from a different sort of angle, then then I'm doing my job. And uh, all wisdom comes from the most high, but I also would appreciate you for paying me for my time. So that being said, today we're going to talk about what seems to be a trend. Now, the first um, photograph that I'm gonna bring up is uh, this one right here. Y'all make sure y'all hit the number one button if you can hear me clearly. <clears throat> Welcome everybody, hit the number one button. Let me know you can hear me clearly. And uh, so this is a photograph. Big shout out to my man, Drew Titan, LLC. I'm gonna read that in a minute. This is a photograph of a gentleman. Apparently his name is Joe. Uh, apparently Joe is a straight dad and he proudly wears skirts and heels to fight the gender stereotypes. Now, we can analyze that a little bit. This is somebody's dad. You're wearing a skirt and heels because women wear that. Right? Or at least that's what we say in our society. So in effect, you're dressing like a woman. You're dressing like a woman stereotypically dresses, which means you're actually reinforcing the gender stereotypes. And in my mind, when I see a man with a dress or heels or a skirt on, we know this is not something that is uncommon. There are some men that do this. But by putting straight dad, meaning heterosexual father, I have to question that because no heterosexual man, no man who is in his right man, my right mind, is going to dress like a woman for attention, no less. Somebody type attention in the chat room. Here's another one that I want to share with you all. This is another photograph. This gentleman, father goes viral for doing anything for his baby girls. 
Now, they have a male version of this sort of uh, ballerina suit. But this young man decides that he wants to dress up in a tutu like his daughters because he'll do anything for his girls. Now, I'm here to tell you this. If you don't set the standards for your daughters, they're going to have the expectation that other men are supposed to do anything for them. And that's how you end up with that spoiled princess mentality. That's how you end up with women who don't know the proper gender roles that they should follow. Shout out to Barry Little. Thank you very much. What message is being conveyed by this? And more importantly, why are so many men, men in Western countries, prone to jump on this trend? Why? See, that's the question we're going to deal with when I get back. Y'all make sure y'all hit the number one button. We'll be right back. Burning podcast, click your mouth pad. Yeah, we out back. Uh, hit the like, hit subscribe. Don't just hate watch, cause we outside. Uh, let them hate watch. Go and play pop. We just lay by. He don't play that. We don't play back. We don't play back. We go way back. Black man, yeah, we earn some. Tune in, gotta learn some. Uncle D podcast, bump it. Likes up, hit the sub button. Black man, yeah, we earn some. Tune in, gotta learn some. Uncle D podcast, bump it. Likes up, hit the sub button. This is Dennis Burden Podcast. Don't just hate watch. Hit subscribe and let them know we outside. Don't hold hate. Donate. Super Chat Cash Jack. Put something in the collection plate. Church. Church. I want y'all to make sure y'all hit the number one button. And we're going to kind of get back to what we like to do over here, man. I need y'all to check in at a certain point when it's time to check in. I need to check in it, to check it in, to start happening again. We got to go ahead and get this algorithm pumping. All right, welcome back to the broadcast. Big shout out to everybody here. Shout out to one of my good friends, Dr. Jay Ashley. I've been knowing him for about 20 years. He's a proud father himself, and it's always good to um, have other fathers in here on these conversations. So the two photographs that I put up, one of a, a white man with heels on and a skirt, another of a black man with a tutu on, I want to point out to you all that these are the type of fathers <clears throat> that are uplifted in Western countries specifically in the United States. Not the masculine, dominant men who have traditionally taught their sons and daughters to play traditional roles. Those same men and those same roles which has helped us survive on this planet for hundreds of thousands of years. No, not those men. The fathers that are uplifted are fathers wearing dresses. And I have to ask myself, why is that? Well, as the subtitle says, these men are obviously trying to be liked. They're trying to be loved. But in, 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 in their attempt to try to be liked and loved, they're garnering zero respect. Shout out to Cody Marshall. Thank you for the super chat. When I look at this photograph, when I look at this young man, it's obvious to me who runs the household. This is the type of dude, his kids and his wife constantly punk him. They undermine him, they belittle him in his household, but he's still the one expected to pay everything and, 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 and handle 100% of the responsibilities. Watch their videos. And I, when, I, when I say they, I'm referring to the young man that you saw with the tutu on because 
they have some sort of little TV show or whatnot going on. And when you watch the videos, when you look at the interactions between this young man and his wife, there's a lot that goes on there. I'm gonna pull the picture back up so we can have a good look at what I'm talking about. And you see this woman and her interactions with her husband. She's very aggressive. And she talks to him any old kind of way. I mean, just look at the physical differences there. Mom outweighs dad. You see? Now, that brother could have had, and shout out to Hootsie, thank you so much. I'll read the super chats all at one time but I want to acknowledge you all. Thank you all for your support, your super chats. Uh, but but let, let's look at this photograph. This man could have had a fit, healthy, beautiful woman, but instead he chose an obese, unhealthy, emasculating female. Look at this. It's very difficult to be a masculine black man or a masculine man in general when you're dealing with a woman who is always trying to emasculate you because she's masculine. And after a while, men just stop fighting with them. The constant disrespect, the constant undermining, after a while, you just become a shell of a man. And what ends up happening, you usually just become a subordinate beta while your wives and your girlfriends run all over you and humiliate you. You become a yes, dear. Somebody type yes, dear in the chat room. Somebody type happy life, a happy wife, happy life in the chat room. Those are fame. Those are sayings made famous by subordinate beta male husbands. Somebody, come on, don't run from it. Somebody type yes, dear, in the chat room. Men should never humiliate themselves for women or children. You need to be a man at all times. Men don't ever let these women fool you out of being a man and playing a man 100% of the time. It's not something that you fall out of. Just like a lion is always a lion and never a pussycat. It doesn't matter how old you are, how young you are, how healthy you are, you're still a man. He didn't have to wear this dress, this tutu to support his daughter. He chose to do that. He's trying to get brownie points. Somebody type brownie points in the chat room. I promise you this, this young man probably had a emasculating uh, or should I say masculine mother? And he's still trying to get brownie points. All that you demonstrate when you put on something like this and you become uh, that willing to try to appease women is you show them that you are, a, uh, your, they show, you show them your supreme weakness. That's what you do. He's not doing that for his baby girl, despite what this broad, despite what this post says. He's doing it to try to please his wife. He's doing it because he doesn't want to have to deal with any conflicts from her. You want to support your baby girls uh, in their ballerina fun? Huh? Go drop her off at class. Sit in the corner, play your video games on your phone. Act like a normal masculine man. And then afterwards, take her to get some ice cream afterwards. That's how you properly celebrate your daughter's uh, 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 ballerina time. See, a father is supposed to do what's best to provide structure, not do everything some little child wants. At this particular juncture, if you look at this, these two little girls have two moms. Yeah. See that girl dad crap? 
Society took it and ran with it, Western society. Any excuse to try to minimize masculinity, because at the end of the day, masculinity is a threat to the status quo. Somebody type masculinity is a threat. So any excuse to minimize masculinity, because masculinity threatens the status quo. If you get a bunch of masculine, thoughtful, determined men in any society, then that society is, society is automatically going to be fully corrected. The only way your government and dysfunction can reign is if the men in that society are weak. Girl dads are oftentimes the biggest uh, simps. This is just another excuse, putting on a dress and blaming it on your daughters. It's just another reason for men who've been emasculated or weak men to stand down because you're tired of fighting. I get it. On the flip side, how is it that this woman is willing to let her husband go out looking like that? Look at the smile on her face. Her smile is bigger than his. Let's take a look at the smile on this woman's face. Look, look, look at it. I'm going to make this a little bigger. She's, her smile is bigger than his. It's almost like she thinks it's hilarious. Shout out to Cody Marshall. Look at her smile. Ear to ear, cheesing it up. It's like she's saying, look what I got him to do, y'all. I'm turning him out just like we planned to, y'all. Cute, ain't he? And she laughing. This man should be ashamed of himself. And I'm willing to bet that this woman has zero respect for him because she's the man in this so-called relationship. Of course, this picture is gonna go viral. The world is laughing at this black man. They're not laughing with him. They're laughing at him. And I'm tired of seeing men in general in dresses, but especially black men. His wife, his daughter don't respect him. I got a mother and a bunch of kids, and not once did I ever think of dressing up in a tutu to get a laugh or try to please them. Nor have I, nor has any woman that I've ever dated, uh, thought it was acceptable for me to do. Women will have zero excuses, fellas. Okay? You see, you women who promote this sort of stuff, you will have zero excuses in the future why you can't find masculine men. Because look at the examples that you're supporting. Look at the type of men that you're supporting. These are the type of men that you uplift and reward with attention and praise. Now, here's the cold thing about it. If these two ever split up, huh? what's going to happen? It's going to be all over social media. She's going to be telling people that he was part of the Rainbow Coalition. She's going to have all kind of receipts, including this. This is a no-win situation for this brother. She'll use this against him in the future. How can you not a leader? You're incapable, uh, uh, incapable of being assertive in a damn uh, uh, ballerina skirt, bro. And you're a father. And these same women are out here complaining about the men that they create. She's going to say, look, <laughs> she's going to say she can't trust him with the girls. Right? She can't trust him with the girls because he's a fruitcake on the low. 
It's going to justify her getting full custody. He's been played like a fluke. When did acting when did acting like a rainbow rider begin to be a, a, a good parenting for black men? Huh, fellas? When when did that become good parenting? Pretending like uh, uh, you belong in uh, over there where the streets get small and the rainbows are painted on the ground. When did that become? Good parenting, a good example for black men. When, when? And see, these are the same type of men that you see on First 48 that explode when they get tired of the disrespect. These are the same dudes. See, what I find is this. In Western society... They're actively trying to rewrite what manhood is and what fatherhood is. So why are we giving them help? I support women, but I don't support this, this foolishness. Not to the point where it in, 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 in invades on who I am as a man and what I stand for as a father. Nevertheless, this is what they want you to do to be upwardly mobile and social in, in America. This is what they want you to do. And you wonder why they got so many passport bros out there. Shout out to the passport bros. Huh? Hmm? You got African-American women complaining about them outlawing this, this rainbow activity in, 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 in Ghana. Huh? That's none of your business. They're promoting the emasculation of heterosexual black men. Look, if, you, if you're a member of the Rainbow Coalition and you want to wear a dress, that's on you. I disagree with it, but that's your choice. But when they start trying to trick heterosexual men of all races to start dressing up like women. We got a problem. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what are we going to do, fellas? I'm going to tell you now, I will never conform nor accept this as proper behavior for men or fathers. I rebuke it. You see, it needs to be sent back to which it, where it came from. See, fellas, there's an old saying, though. The only thing required for evil to prosper is for good men to do nothing. And so my question is, why in the hell are men afraid to stand up and be men? Why is that? Why don't we say anything? How can you, look, how can you call yourself a Christian and you support this? We're going to talk about that in a minute when I get back. Y'all make sure y'all do what you got to do. Hit the like, share, subscribe button. And if you appreciate what you're hearing tonight, make sure you uh, pay me for my time. I'll be right back. Going live in a minute, Blizzard King. This is Winner, Dennis Sperling Podcast. You are rocking with the realest black men represented. Ain't no lies because we winning. Catching flies, ain't no feelings. Uncle D, we the villain, baby. We just left the village, baby. Now we in them villas, baby. Dennis Sperling Podcast. Tune in and we get it, baby. You can hate the player, hate the game. We love all you haters. Hate watch, hate watch. Calling lovely ladies. Hands on your knees. You can thank us later. We snatching the crowns off of queens. We obliterate them. Hella truth, chain the devil, they trying to eliminate us. You begging the sipping haters, peeling layers off with haters. Whoa, Southern Cadillac music like outcast. Ain't jumping without bass. Tennis burning podcast. Whoa, Southern Cadillac music like outcast. Ain't jumping without bass. Tennis burning podcast. All right, welcome back to the broadcast. Big shout out to Cody Marsh. He said, the reason why he's doing that is he wants to be loved. You're right. Once you said that, I thought of Manslow, Manslow's uh, hierarchy of needs. Yeah, he's trying to be accepted, man. This is, th this is what you try. Instead of being respected, you want to be liked. And that's kind of what I want to talk about when I get around to that particular subject. 
being a father, oftentimes you have to be the bad guy. You got to be the bad guy. You are the one that brings law and order into the house. You're the one that brings structure. You're the one that sets the customs and how things should go in the house. And so if you can be swayed to do any darn thing, then you're an inadequate father. Nobody's going to respect you. Respect should be more important to you as a man than love. Because if your woman doesn't respect you, then she's going to soon lose interest in you. Because if she can't, re if she doesn't respect you, she's going to realize that other men don't respect you. And when people don't respect you, they run all over your boundaries. So shout out to Cody Marshall. Thank you. Next up, pro man. With the kind of men, with, with the kind of off men coming across the border, this won't even end well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Shout out to you, man. You got all these third world men coming up with their patriarchal, uh, uh, traditional notions, their hyper masculine traditional notions. Oh, yeah, it's gonna definitely be a change. It's definitely gonna be a shock for these women, and these women are gonna like them more. These feminist women that, that claim they want equal rights are gonna like these uh, aggressive, masculine, manly third world dudes that, that, that are coming up here that have put hands on them and, and get them pregnant. They, they love that, that's what they actually want. The fact that men are so American men are so wishy and washy and willing to give in, that's not a turn on. But um, shout out to you, uh, Pro Man One. And then Husi says, tap them out, Uncle D. Father set proper examples that lead to healthy, constructive outcomes, not those that lead to confusion. Confused folks can't lead. That's true. That's the truth, brother. Cody Marshall, salute to you, Uncle D. This nonsense has gone too far, very little. You're right about that. And uh, Drew Titan. So let's get back to where we at. Y'all make sure y'all and shout out to my man, Urban Eagle. Um, so we're talking about dad and address, not just men in dresses, but a dad in the dress. What makes a man want to do that? Huh? You're trying too hard to be liked and loved when in reality you should be focused on being respected. OK, that should be your respect is more important than love as far as a man is concerned. The Bible commands uh, the woman to love her husband, uh, the, the husband to love his wife, as Jesus did the, the church, basically. And so the only commandment that a woman had to do was respect her husband. You're undermining the respect your, your woman had for you. You're walking around with a dress on. You see? My man, Daryl Langford, thank you so much. He said, uh, just realize YouTube unsubscribed me. Yeah, YouTube. Y'all should check. YouTube probably unsubscribed a lot of y'all. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe. But let's get back to the main subject. All my Christian folk, uh, all you religious folk, all you Hebrews and Muslims and all you books, you folks, uh, books, the Bible folks. You can't call yourself a Christian or one of these uh, be involved or uh, be a, uh, a devout follower of one of these Abrahamic religions and then turn around and support this foolishness, this, 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 uh, this, this, this rainbow riding. You can't do that. That makes you nothing more than a hypocrite. You see? However, the funny thing that I find is it's always black Christian sisters that'll tell you that you're being judgmental and acting as if you've done no sin. When you chastise them or you reprimand them or society about this, they always hit you with that we all have sin, a sinful nature. But see, the last time I checked, it says that if you know the Bible and still willfully sin, Jesus is no longer a sacrifice for your sins. Shout out to uh, Southside Militia. Shout out to Seminole. Shout out to DJ Broken Dusty. I'm going to get with y'all in a minute. Um, read your super chats. So what do you mean by that, my Christian sisters? And black American women are the most Christian folk uh, ever. And yet you support this rainbow riding. You support... Men, black men dressing up in dresses. You need to read your verse in the Bible about how a man should not wear a woman's garment. Neither woman should wear a man's garment. See, this, this here is the foolishness 
in the modern woman. And it explains a whole lot about, um, you know, about the experience that most black men experience every day. These so-called black Christian sisters are the biggest feminists and they give me the biggest pushback. You pro woman before anything else. That's not a woman of faith. You can't, you can't read the scripture and be pro woman. You can't even fully understand it. If you got that sort of programming in you, you just pretending. And so fellas, what I'm telling you all pushback is not only necessary, but it's required. You shouldn't be caught dead in, in something like this, man. And you are in, you are within your right to judge the sin of others. You're within your right to talk to these type of brothers and say, bro, you're doing too much. You off code. You're doing it for the likes. You're trying to, you're trying to appease these women. And they're not going to, they're going to, they're going to like you less if they can get you to do that. They're not going to respect you. See, the problem is oftentimes people just like to be, they just like to do what they want to do. They want to do what they want to do, and they don't want anybody to be able to say anything about it. And anything you use to tell them is wrong, they, go, they try to invalidate it. You see? And as far as these hard-headed women, if you can't get a so-called woman of faith to be in order without compromising your principles of masculinity, it's best to leave that woman alone. Most of them have reprobate minds anyway. And this is why Abrahamic religions forbid women from leadership roles. Because they'll drag you down like they did Eve. Nevertheless, the overarching picture here is that this is a, a sign of the decline of Western society. Trash like these pictures, they promote exactly, uh, <laughs> the, the, these are, this is exactly the reason why so many men are voting conservative, including black men. This is why so many of you have said, you know what? We got to put an end to this. This is why I'm voting for Donald Trump in the upcoming elections. This is why I'm voting Republican because this liberal uh, agenda, this rainbow rider agenda is too much. And then the fact that we have these migrants coming in, that's just the cherry on top. And you see why there are so many, uh, and, and let me tell you something, real black men, real black men who demand respect, they're abandoning what is left of the black community. That's what real black men are doing because a real man is not going to stay around for that level of disrespect, especially considering there's a war on men in general, but especially black men. These men are leaving to try to find women, a better class of women to reproduce with. Shout out to the passport kings. And they're not doing, they're doing it for a good cause. They're not just doing it to trick. You got men walking around with high heels on talking about this is a celebration of breast cancer. We're, we're trying to raise, uh, so you're gonna allow yourself to be a spectacle. You're gonna emasculate yourself by walking your big old self around in, in women's shoes. That's not funny. Shout out to Quantum Solace. Why don't they do anything for prostate cancer? Hmm? Or is this just a, any excuse to put a man in a dress? Any excuse to put a man in a Western society in a dress or emasculate? White, black, or whatever. But the reason they attack black men so harshly, so much, is because typically we're the epitome of masculinity in this society. It's black men who are your greatest athletes and your, uh, the apex of masculinity in the society. So if they can put you in a dress, Everybody else is easy. That's the that's why they always targeting black men. 
because of because you're known for your masculinity. You're looked up to for your masculinity. That's why they love to get these super athletes, basketball players and football players in, in, in these doggone pink cleats and pink shoes. Hell, I'd rather just donate. I don't need to do all that. They're not fighting gender stereotypes. They're reinforcing them when they put on this by wearing high heels. You're reinforcing the gender stereotypes that women wear high heels and dresses and, and their favorite color is pink. You don't need to dress, uh, uh, you don't need to dress like an, uh, you know, it, it, the other thing, they want to bring attention to um, DV and other situations and, and issues that women have with men. You don't need to put on a dress uh, like a woman to bring attention to um, the abuse that women suffer to prove a point. Okay. Now I want to, I want to contrast that by what is, still masculine. If you got a daughter and you braid her hair, there's nothing wrong with that. That's not that extreme. You understand what I'm saying? There's nothing wrong with that. You got a little girl, you sitting there trying to braid your little girl's hair. That's not a problem. Don't let, don't let anybody tell you it is. That's not extreme. You see? However, if you sitting here with a tutu on, you got a dress on. You're wearing high heels like in that other photograph. Photograph. You got to ask yourself, what kind of message are you sending? Huh? What message are you sending to your daughter? Huh? You don't have to dress like a little girl or a woman to get along with your daughters. They need and they want to see a masculine figure for guidance and logic and wisdom and protection. Take a good look at this brother on my screen. Does he look like he can protect anybody with that? Huh? With a tutu on? Uh, that's not the message you want to convey, fam. Not at all. Not at all. At best, you you out here looking like a beta male and you're looking down low and it's just a mess. It's a mess. We're supposed to show our daughters what men look like. Not what a guy looks like in a dress. Now I'm going to flip back to this other photograph. This other photograph of this cat. The gentleman from the picture earlier. With the skirt on and in, in the in the high heels. Another American dad. Y'all hit the number one button if you can hear me. Y'all make sure y'all hit the like button too. Let me pull this photograph up. I want you to see, and I'm over here on my... Uh, I'm over here on my my YouTube uh, page, my community tab, like I said, it's okay to show affection to your children as a father. You don't have to be some brutal Neanderthal. And so if you got a little girl, there's nothing wrong with braiding your little girl's hair. There's nothing wrong with that, but when you find yourself tempted to start putting on dresses. That's just foolishness. 
You understand? Now this is the other photograph right here. Well, that's actually me. That's me and my boy right there. That's my son, Roman, that just won the, uh, the Crimson Sun that just won his first place gold medal. You see me kissing him on the top of his head. There's nothing wrong with that. It's okay to show affection and love to your child. That doesn't make you soft. Boys need to see that. They need to know it's okay to say they love. You got some men who've never had their father tell them they are proud of them, much less even give them a hug. There's nothing wrong with that. But let me show you what, the, the, that's him taking the first place spot. But uh, this right here, this is a problem. Look at this man. Huh? Now, I'm going to just say this, and I might sound selfish, but I know you you white fellas feel the same way when you see a, a black dude in a dress. I'm glad this dude right here is not one of us, <laughs> okay? What I mean is I am so happy that this is not a black man. All right. Nevertheless, there's enough black men and black athletes that they have out here promoting this weird uh, off color agenda. That, you know. It's the same effect. You see. The fact they're using this white fella to uh, promote this image is clearly dysfunction. But I'm glad it's, it's a white fella in, in, instead of another black dude. Because we got plenty of them. And I don't know where they came from. But over the past 10 years, I've seen more uh, 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 spicy rappers and, and zesty uh, 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 singers and football players and basketball players than I ever have in my whole life. You black men shouldn't be compromising your uh, masculinity to service this, this agenda of theirs. You got these people like Lil Nas X and Saucy Santana of Montana. They're way worse than this clown right here. They're the modern day uh, Medea. I feel, it, 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 look, I feel bad for somebody it's a little girl. You got to see your daddy dressed up like that. Daughters are going to grow up liking men and women. They're going to go every way but God's way. And uh, we looking at this white fella, but the black community, especially black women, love supporting these dudes. They love this stuff. And you wonder why Uncle uh, uh, Cleophas look at them young kids like that, smiling. This right here is, this is a closet. This, is, this dude is in the closet. There's nothing straight about this. He looks too happy, uh, like a woman would, getting all this attention. And the same goes for that other cat. Our people have a severe addic addiction to attention. You're always trying to be accepted. As I said before, with the other fella, you, they got male versions of a tutu you could have worn, but he chose to wear the female version. Mind you, this is the same couple and that black couple apparently. Uh, they had an issue back related to some ice cream and... Uh, uh, I guess either licking ice cream and putting it back in a container. I mean, anything for likes, anything for attention. They go to any lengths for it. And this cat right here, he's not straight. Straight dad proudly wears skirt and heels to fight gender stuff. This dude is dressed, he's looking for a date. Anytime someone uses the term straight and they put it as prominent like that and dressed like that, by default, that means uh, something here in this picture is not right morally or figuratively. This dude is a gender bender, needs to just admit it. 
Okay, no need for these weird arguments. Huh? This should read, straight dad proudly wears skirt and heels because he's done it before, many times. That's what that should read. Who is you? Who are you trying to fool? He found himself a reason to be who he's been wanting to be. He got a lot of sugar in his tank, and it's just found an opportunity to let it out. You need to go ahead and join the Skittles community and stop trying to hide behind fighting gender stereotypes. Now, I'm going to give you all some lessons on fatherhood as a father myself. We're going to do that when we come back. Y'all make sure y'all hit the number one button. I'll be right back. In a minute, Blizzard King, this is winter, Dennis Ferlin Podcast. You are rocking with the realest black men represented. Ain't no lies, cause we winning, catching flies, ain't no feelings. Uncle D, we the villain, baby. We just left the village, baby. Now we in them villas, baby. Dennis Ferlin Podcast, tuning in, we get it, baby. You can hate the player, hate the game. We love all you haters. Hate watch, hate watch. Calling lovely ladies, hands on your knees. You can thank us later. We snatching the crowns off of Queens. We obliterate them. Tell the truth, train the devil, they trying to eliminate us. You begging the sympathy. Haters, peeling layers off potatoes. Whoa, Southern Cadillac music like Outcast. Ain't jumping without bass. Tennis burning podcast. Whoa, Southern Cadillac music like Outcast. Ain't jumping without bass. Tennis burning podcast. Whoa. All right, welcome back to the broadcast. Shout out to everybody in the chat room. Thank you so much for the super chats. I want to acknowledge the super chat people right quick. Um, we got, um, my man Floyd Holt, big shout out to you. Thank you so much. Let me uh think I got a little delay in my screen. Hold on. You guys can hear me clearly. Hit the number one button. You guys can hear me clearly. Hit the number one button. Boom. There we go. Okay. My man Floyd Holt said, um, I sent something worse than this to your IG page. A black man worn a dress, a wedding dress. And his black wife wore a suit in, in, in their way. Oh, yeah, I've seen that one, too. I saw that one, too. I thought it was AI. Yeah, it, you're doing too much, fellas. I don't get it. Okay? And we're going to talk about that. Shout out to Quantum Solace for representing logic, truth, and masculinity. Those are some good tenants to represent, bro. DJ Broken Dusty, why in the why in the world would this dude be in that attire? He trying to say something. You know what I'm saying? Seminole 2014, keep doing your thing, Uncle D. We need real men to set it straight. Hard to issue orders in the house when you got a dress on. Right. Fellas, if you find yourself in a dress, your woman is not going to respect you. Okay? That's what you need to understand. Shout out to Southside Militia. Yep, bunch of BM and, and BW support Tyler Perry. Exactly. And then also Daryl Langford just realized YouTube unsubscribed. Yeah, I got you twice, man. But um, here's the thing. Let me start off by saying this. Despite what you've been told, okay? And, and let, let me go ahead and put this up right here. Despite what uh, the common narrative is, bruh, let me go ahead and, and put, put your boy up here. Masculinity is not fluid. You guys remember this cat? Oh. Remember this dude right here? Huh? There he is. Y'all remember him? Jonathan Majors. So right last year, right before that white chick got him caught up, you understand? Remember this photo shoot in there with the duck lips? He was in there talking about masculinity is fluid and people like myself and Judge Joe Brown said, no, nah, bro, you, 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 you just in here looking like a goof troop. Masculinity is not fluid. You understand? 
Manhood is not fluid. And I want to talk to y'all man to man. I want to talk to you not just as a YouTuber, but also as a man, as a father. Um, there are tenets of manhood that remain constant. And they're fixtures of masculinity. And they have been for hundreds of thousands of years. And they are prevalent uh, through many species. In other words, they cut across all species of mammal, you see, and non-mammal. Now, the qualities traditionally associated with men, such as courage, strength, sexual potency, all right? These are qualities. The condition of the, the, the qualities associated with manhood, manliness. Okay, what is a man? A man is an adult male, as distinguished from a child or female. Manhood is a destination. It's a location uh, that a boy child arrives at. Shout out to Quantum Solace. For a man to be for men to be masculine, they're expected to display attributes such as strength, power, and competitiveness, and less openly display emotion and affection, especially towards other men who are not their family. Why is it so hard to say that? You don't need to be an open book with your emotions, fellas. The truth is women don't really want that. They don't want you to always be showing their emotions, whether it be anger, sorrow, sadness, fear. They need you to be like a rock because they need to be able to have confidence in you. She breaking down, the kids breaking down, and you breaking down. That's not the stability that that uh, of, of masculinity that built empires and protected societies for thousands of years. You need to have those masculine characteristics, characteristics, and those qualities. Uh, and they didn't need to be honed in boys. Let me give you a little anthropological lesson. You, the human being was designed to survive. Okay? The human being was designed to survive, and he thrives to have his least pain, he or she, to, to exist in a pain-free lifestyle as much as possible. And in our entire existence, over hundreds of thousands of years of being modern men, we have evolved to resist and to avoid pain because pain leads to death, the death that would likely follow from pain. Again, the purpose is so that we can live a long, pain-free life. And in order to do that, we separated the roles. We became, uh, 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 I believe the word is dimorphos dimorphism. We separated the female from the male. The male has her role, the male has his roles, the female has her roles, and it's worked well. And when you master those roles and you come together with someone who's mastered their roles, guess what? It's a beautiful coexistence. Doesn't work when you got a masculine man and a masculine woman. Doesn't work when you have a feminine woman and a feminine man. You see? So why is it that somebody would be trying to turn society upside down? Who wants to undermine it? 
Let me give you another attribute of masculinity. Masculinity is resistance. Right? Masculinity is resistance to submission. I read a book. You guys familiar with Monster Cody Scott? The autobiography of Monster Cody Scott. Are you guys familiar with that book? Either way, Monster Cody Scott, he was a member of a uh, L.A. street gang. Uh, back in the 70s and 80s, a particular, uh, uh, an aggressive sect of an L.A. street gang. And he talked about one of the times he went to prison. And uh, in his autobiography entitled Monster, and it was a story of a fellow named Fat Rat and B.T. And so, uh, you know, Fat Rat was a booty bandit. And for you guys who are familiar with that prison terminology, you understand what I mean. So he ended up going to prison, and there was Fat Rat, who was a known booty bandit. And um, Fat Rat was explaining to Monster Cody Scott how he was going to turn this particular inmate out. I don't know if the inmate was new or whatever. And this fella happened to be a very muscular fella not fat rat but but the other fella was a muscular masculine looking fella he wasn't some small skinny kid that was easy to beat up but fat rat did the first thing he did was slap him he slapped him why did he slap him matter of fact he slapped him twice what is it about slapping somebody it's not a deadly blow you slap women, you slap children to bring them back to conformity. You slap your inferiors. See, a man is worthy of a punch. And you punch him because a punch is more deadly and you deem him a dangerous threat and you want to get him off you and out of commission as soon as possible. But he slapped this other person. The other person's name was BT. You don't slap a man uh, you expect that's going to hit you back in return. If you slap him, the expectation is that he's not dangerous. Moreover, the whole purpose of slapping him is for it, it, to objectively acknowledge that he's inferior to you. And so by slapping BT or BTC, Fat Rat slapped him, he was demonstrating that he was, that BT was inferior. And he was also confirming that he wouldn't do anything. And what's the next thing he did? Those of you guys who read the book, he stripped, Fat Rat stripped BT, the new prisoner, down to his boxer draws, breaking down his masculinity, constantly breaking down his, his resistance. by taking his clothes from him, took his protection, exposed him. And if a man can't protect himself, how can he be protected to protect anybody else? Again, part of being masculine, masculinity is resistance. And if you can't resist for yourself, guess what? You can't be a good protector. This is what I need you guys to understand. So wearing these clothes and exposing yourself and all of this foolishness, they're constantly breaking you down. They're constantly demonstrating to the public that you're not real men. By contrast, if we look at the story by Andy Dufresne in Shawshank Redemption, Andy was designed to work in the prison laundry. You guys saw Shawshank Redemption. He was working in the prison laundry and he was frequently assaulted by what Morgan Freeman describes in the movie as the sisters and their leaders, Boggs, uh, Diamond. But each and every time, as skinny as Andy Dufresne was, he violently resisted every time. He never submitted. He never submitted. He always resisted. So we never saw him as being emasculated or less than a man. Instead, we deplored the condition 
but his character wasn't diminished. You see the difference? But if you fellas are just going to roll over and lay down and take it, you're not even me. You're not resisting anymore. And that's why people in Western Europe and Africa look at American men like we're less than men. They think we are all rainbow riders. Go ask them Russian men what they think about you. You see? Did y'all get that? That probably went over most of y'all's head. Resistance. We're talking about the traits of masculinity, and I'm giving you examples of it. This is, this is some graduate school level stuff right here. Hit the number one button. Another one. You know those guys that always want to pick fights? They want to impose their dominance. Well, let me say this. Dominance merely for the purpose of dominance is not masculinity. Masculinity, masculinity is not about dominance. In other words, we don't try to fight to be dominant. We're fighting or we're trying to fight so that we can resist. We resist death by being resilient enough to survive in the environment. We resist death by being strong enough to capture and kill what we need to eat. Masculinity is not dominance. In other words, beating someone in a fist fight doesn't make you masculine. You can be as fruity as a San Francisco softball team. And, and, and buff. There's some dudes on the internet. Big and swole and buff. And just as fruity as a fruitcake. Fighting, it does show that you're skilled. It does show that you practice. It does show that you're genetically predisposed to resist the environment and hunt and protect yourself. That's great, but that's just one attribute. That alone is not masculinity. You see? That's why when men fight, two men fight, oftentimes they give each other a good hard fight no matter who wins. The two combatants know what the other is made of, so they respect each other. Whether you win or lose, you respect him because he fought back. He refused to uh, submit, and you respect a person like that. He can survive. He's equipped to resist the, 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 the environment. So again, masculinity is not about dominance. It's not about, it's about your willingness to resist the environment and your ability to survive in the ecosystem and against all adversaries. That's what masculinity is about. And this is why you respect other men. And this is why respect is the currency of manhood. So what does it say about a bunch of men who submit to the will of their women and their daughters and they're willing to put dresses on to try to make them happy? Huh? What does that say about them? That is not masculine. That's what I'm trying to tell you. So you don't come on my page, don't come in public talking about I can still be masculine and put on a dress if you did it because you're submitting to the will of your woman. You should have resisted. I don't care how much you can bench press. I don't care how fast you can run. I don't care how much money you have. I don't care how, how, how buff you are. Those are great uh, uh, traits that people could use to calibrate your possible ability to resist in the environment. But that's it. 
You need to prove it through your actions. How much other men respect you determines your social status as a man. In other words, if men don't respect you, it's because you've lacked, you, 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 you have lacked to demonstrate the qualities of manhood. So then why are they trying to make men wearing dresses acceptable? Because they know it's not acceptable to men. So the more they put these images out there, the more they put these fruitcake images out there, the more we become accepting of it, the less we disrespect those men who do it. You see the psychological trick? They put these men up because they're trying to retrain you men who are watching to accept it. And you have to resist. Somebody type resist in the chat room. As it is right now, when you see one of these rainbow riders, with heels on and all this other stuff, you recognize that that, or, or your view of them, your, your, view of the, your view of their masculinity, or you, you have a diminished view of their masculinity. You see it as defective. Again, your ability to resist the environment, your courage, your bravery, your integrity, your honesty, all of this flows through your masculinity. Even bullies that we hate so much serve a purpose. We need bullies. Because bullies, they help you and others in society to discover whether you are man enough to resist the environmental pressures. If you're going to be around me, I want to test you. And so what the bully does is he makes sure that everyone in the tribe is strong enough to pull their own weight. And, and will resist. They will fight back. Because see, if all the members of the tribe are strong, there's an increased likelihood of our survival. We don't want any weak links, black man. So you have an obligation to bully these people in the form of chastising them and not sitting back and allowing it to happen. Again, masculinity is not fluid and wearing dresses ain't cool. Because see, at the point where masculinity becomes fluid, it can flow into anything. Pretty soon, you're going to have so-called heterosexual men thinking it's acceptable to go get boob jobs and butt implants and still consider themselves heterosexual. That's what happens when you don't hold the line. That's what happens when you don't resist. Are y'all listening to me? Are you listening to me? This is where we're headed. I need to know that y'all listening to me. Something that is both nothing and everything at the same time has no meaning. So if masculinity becomes like water and it can flow into any shape, it's nothing because it, it could be everything. No different than racism. Once racism became everything, now it's nothing. So I'm not comfortable watering down what masculinity is. And you shouldn't be either. We're going to take a little break. I'll be right back. Y'all hit the number one button, man. Y'all make sure y'all... Uh, if you like what you hear, if you appreciate this recharge that I'm giving y'all, contribute to the Super Chat. Pay me for my time. Contribute to the Cash App. Pay me for my time. That's what I'm asking you to do. And in the meantime, while you guys are paying me for my time, I'm going to open up the chat room. But uh, anyway, y'all check out this cool video, man. I'll be right back, but y'all make sure y'all pay me for my time. All these simps running around here, running amok. All these son husbands. It ain't just these single mothers' faults. Happy wife? No. Happy life. 
Y'all heard that before. That's the most simplest thing you can hear say. Yeah. Welcome to Simp University. Uh-huh. That's right. We got an all-star lineup. Yeah. We got Dr. Umar. Simp Jackson on the drums. Oh, Johnson. Yeah. We got Dr. Boogity 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 Voice Watkins on the tambourines. We got Derek. The Janky Jack Jackson singing back up. And this is the Simp Academy, baby. Shake it for a simp, shake it for a simp, uh-huh. Shake it for a simp, shake it for a simp, uh-huh. She just want that money anyway, she just want it. He don't give a fuck, he gon' pay, so he gon' pay it, baby. Shake it for a simp, shake it for a simp, uh-huh. Shake it for a simp, shake it for a simp, uh-huh. She just want that money anyway, he don't care. He don't give a fuck, he gon' pay, so that's it. Shake it for a simp, shake it for a simp, uh Worth the pimp, see, I walk with a limp, uh, uh This is for the donation niggas who got food Been a decade running and still no school and no class You keep asking for more cash yeah. Academy growing, pucker up and kiss ass <sighs> These doctor, imposter, homie, you check the roster Black women panda, sounds like you a scammer Yeah, we lace them up like them Chuck Tennis We don't love these hoes, they screaming, fuck Dennis Fuck Dennis We holding court, ain't no love in it it. Rather be the judge in it Just as fuck you fuck niggas Check game Your mama gave you niggas all a simp chip Now you simping A1 game All on this simp shit High degree having nigga talking this trick shit What you gonna be teaching at that school nigga? Pimp shit? This is for the simps at the academies Listen to your mama play Fuck what your daddy say Yeah, 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 yeah Nigga, you a simp Yeah, simp, simp Nigga, you a simp Yeah this is for the simps at the academies. Listen to your mama play. Fuck what your daddy say. Yeah, 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 yeah. My nigga, you a simp. Yeah. My nigga, you a simp. Yeah. Shake it for a simp. Shake it for a simp. Uh-huh. Shake it for a simp. Shake it for a simp. Uh-huh. She just want that money anyway. She just want it. He don't give a fuck. He gon' pay. So he gon' pay it, baby. Shake it for a simp. Shake it for a simp. Uh huh. Shake it for a simp. Shake it for a simp. Uh huh. She just want that money anyway. She don't care. Yeah. He don't give a fuck. He gon' pay. It, baby. You niggas is soft. That's one the bread, baby. You worse than King Kong trying to save mayonnaise, man. Sipping is like Kool Aid. And you niggas had extra sugar, sugar. Cause you sipping niggas never had that booger, booger. How can a rotten bitch raise a forgotten trick that turned into a switch hitter? You more concerned with alphabets and crayon colors. I'm not that nigga, and I'm definitely not that brother. So when the kingdom falls, and the she heathen no longer pick up your call, and will we leave you simps swinging from these salty balls? Let's believe I got my attorney named Dennis Berlin on speed dial, and in the meanwhile, my simping ain't in my pimping. Do not shake shit for me, baby. But you can uh, shake it for a simp, shake it for a simp, shake it for, em. shake it for a simp, shake it for a simp, shake it, shake it. She just want that money anyway. She just want that money. He don't give a fuck. He gon' pay. He gon' pay it, baby. Now shake it for a simp, shake it for a simp, shake it, shake it, shake it for a simp, shake it for a simp, shake it, shake it. She just want that money anyway. She just want the brain. He don't give a fuck. He gon' pay. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, welcome back to the broadcast. Big shout out to everybody who contributed to the Super Chat. I want to give a super big shout out to my man, Wrench Turner. Thank you so much for that $100, baby. I'm going to give you the rock and roll for that. Shout out to you. All right, bro. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. He says, uh, salute council, support Black Man Media. Yes, please do. Shout out to uh, Quantum Solace, Bravo, Roman. Roman for the winner. Yeah, man. Shout out to my boys. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm raising strong, masculine men around here, you know, because that's what I want to put out in the world. We need more strong, masculine men who can help push this world into the future uh, on a successful track. Big shout out to Floyd Holt. Uh, he said, send something worse than this on IG. Yeah, I got that. Yeah, I, I got that, bro. Uh, pre- yeah, it, it's sad. Uh, Quantum Solace representing logic, truth, and masculinity. Thank you so much. Um, well, anyway, I put the link in the chat room. You guys aren't coming in here. That's cool. We don't need to uh, belittle this, uh, beleaguer this point. I think y'all got what I'm saying. Um, but anyway, as I was, um, you know, my whole point is this, 
Uh, masculinity is not fluid. There are some traditional traits that actually make sense. They're based on biology. No need to change it. Recognize that what they're trying to do is get you men to accept this so that you'll judge those other men less. So you, so, so, <laughs> so you won't see their masculinity as diminished. That's what they want because they want to have more men like that, more men who are compliant and, you know, cooperative. And, you know, you, if you can get a man to put a dress on and act like a woman, you can get him to do anything. You've basically taken away from him the essence of who he is, and that is his masculinity, period. And so you fellas need to resist. Somebody type resist in the chat room. Resist in the chat room. That's what I want you guys to think about. But um, other than that, I want to thank you guys. Shout out to everybody who contributed to the super chat. Shout out to everybody who contributed to the cash app. My man, Carlton Ward. Woo, woo. Thank you so much, fam. Oh, I, I probably shouldn't have said the brother name, but thank you, Mr. Ward. <laughs> thank you, Mark, the freelancer. Uh, uh, my man, Mr. Ward came through with the hundred bucks. Thank you so much. Mr. Mark Freelancer five. Thank you so much for that, man. The real CP show. Thank you for the two for 24. That's what's up. And then also, uh, Kenneth McDonald. Thank you so much for the 20 bucks. But, um, I've said enough. I said what I had to say. I've spoken to you guys like a dad, but you black women and women of all ethnicities out there don't promote men wearing dresses. Cause you're going to be the main ones to suffer when you don't have masculine men out there to marry. Stop playing these silly games. You can be so open-minded that your brains can fall out. And that's what's beginning to happen in Western society. You're so open-minded that your brains are falling out. You know why we like Trump? You know why black men like Trump? You know why a lot of men like Trump? Because at the end of the day, no matter what you think about him, we see him as a masculine man. We didn't see a Barack Obama like that. We see uh, old man Joe Biden, just a feeble old man. But we see old Donald Trump. Somebody type Trump 2024 in the chat room. Somebody type Trump 2024 in the chat room. Somebody type make masculinity great again. <laughs> Somebody type make masculinity great again. <laughs> uh yeah, that's basically what we come on, come on now. Don't run away. All you black dudes talk about you're gonna vote for Trump. Somebody try Trump Trump 2024 in the chat room. Come on, don't run from it. Shout out to my man the real Dale Jennings. Thank you so much, man. Make masculinity great again. I need that hat. That's what I need. That's what I need. I need that hat, man. Make I need that t-shirt. Make masculinity great again. Somebody said making America straight again. <laughs> <laughs> right, man. It's like, man, we they got us. They trying to put us all on a fruit wagon, you know? And now you got these immigrants coming up from down south. Shh, man, they they let me tell y'all something. And I want y'all to listen to this. I want somebody to clip this and record it. Um you think things are going bad now? Wait till this summer. Wait till this summer when all those immigrants start getting kicked out and there's so many of them that American citizens are going to be having conflicts with them. Because let me tell you something. It's only so much of this abuse that American citizens are going to take before they start throwing these hands and elbows. See, what people don't realize when they come over here is that this is a country that is violent. It has a violent history and its people are violent. And that's reflected in our music and our sports and in our culture. There's a reason we have one of the largest armies that has ever existed, one of the most powerful, well-financed armies that have ever existed on the planet. It's because we are warlike people. So what's going to happen when these immigrants who are coming over here thinking that we soft and can get pushed around are going to see the bad end of American society? It's going to happen. And the hotter it gets, the more likely it is to explode. I'm anticipating immigrant riots, uh, American and immigrant riots this summer. It's going to get hot. Somebody type, it's going to get hot. <laughs> Make it hot. You understand? You see, because there are some men who are going to resist. 
Irrespective of them trying to soften us up, there are some men who are going to resist. And we can't blame them. And we need more men like that. Period. So I, I predict that's coming. But uh, that being the case, shout out to my man, MC Recovery Relapse. Salute Ice Lords. My little brother, John, been in the ICU for last days, man. Oh, man, that's terrible. I hate to hear that, brother. Uh, we'll keep him in our thoughts, bro, and prayers. Uh, the real Dale Jennings, Massa, Massa Hats. Boy, that's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um, thank you guys so much. But other than that, man, it's been cool. I appreciate it. Uh, you guys hang out. Be cool. Y'all keep checking out. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like, share, subscribe. I need you guys to help me get to 100,000. We're going to try and get there this year. I'm at almost 70,000. I need another 30,000 followers. Uh, YouTube is playing unfair, but that's all right, man. We're going to play the game. And, you know, I got that work coming down. You, YouTube is going to, they're going to know my name. <laughs> they're going to know my whole name by the time I get through with them. Uh, so shout out to everybody. Thank you so much. Please like, share, subscribe for you guys who didn't get a chance to see the broadcast and you're watching this on replay. If you like what you hear, if you're motivated, if you learn, go ahead and hit that super thanks up in the chat, in, in, in the comment section. I always read those. I always highlight them. I always give them a little heart or a thumbs up, depending on how much you give. So go ahead and do what you got to do, man. Show your appreciation and pay me for my time. Other than that, this is Uncle D. And as I always said this time, I'm... Dennis Berlin Podcast. Hit the like button, subscribe.